Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Clay, members of the committee, I thank you for the invitation to uh, join you today. My name is Paul Rosenzweig. I'm a senior fellow at the R Street Institute. Uh, we characterize ourselves as a pragmatic think tank, which I guess means that we think the free markets work, except when they don't. Uh, there is good evidence that the free markets do not fully work in the cybersecurity arena, and that the market does not adequately price in the costs of cybersecurity. Recent history is, of course, replete with examples of data breaches, like the Equifax breach and the harm they have caused. I myself have been the subject of at least three breaches in the last couple of years, Equifax, Home Depot, and the OPM breach. And as the Verizon data breach annual report reflects, in 2016, the last year for which we have some data, more than 40,000 incidents and, and 2,000 confirmed breaches have occurred. So make no mistake, cyber threats are real, and recent experience has shown that neither the private nor the public sector are fully equipped to cope with them. Given these threats, we should expect that the market would provide a solution. Why is that not enough? The answer, I think, lies in the conception of externalities, that is, the fact that activity between two economic actors may directly or unintentionally affect a third party. Cybersecurity has those types of negative externalities. The most important one is what we call a pricing problem. That is that private sector actors often do not internalize the costs of security failures in a way that leads them to take adequate protective steps. When software fails to prevent an intrusion or a service provider fails to interdict a malware attack, the costs are borne entirely by the end users. In this way, security for the broader internet is a classic market externality. How then should government respond to this problem? First, and most importantly, we should guard against what public choice theory calls rent seeking. That is the idea that we should not foster the right result, but rather the result that concerted lobbying efforts favor. Second, we must be careful of inflexible, slow-to-change mandates. The government's hierarchical decision-making structure allows only slow progress in adapting to this phenomenon and operates far too slowly to catch up with the pace of cyber change, if you will. We make decisions at the speed of conversation, but change happens at the speed of light. Of course, whenever we've chosen to address a pricing problem through litigation, there are also significant costs, most notably transaction costs. Operating a civil justice system is expensive and participating in that system even more so. Those costs which are unrelated to the merits of the failure or the litigation have a strong tendency to distort the market in ways that are often unanticipated. So then what's the right approach? My counsel to you would be first, do no harm. In the end, if a regulatory approach is chosen at all, it should be flexible, and scalable to a, and a standard setting approach with a light administrative enforcement mechanism, rather than a hard mandatory approach with a heavy civil sanction. Most importantly, we must develop a system that creates more certainty than it does uncertainty. And that requires two things, guidance and reassurance. As to guidance, we need a model that relies on a flexible standard, but also one that is clearly articulated. By contrast, for example, today, much of the guidance from the FTC to consumer enterprises on acceptable cybersecurity practices comes in the form of consent decrees that, taken together, articulate a very indefinite standard of reasonable behavior. That's a poor way to set standards. Second, no enterprise will invest resources in achieving standards without some assurance that doing so will benefit the enterprise. In reality, a major portion of that benefit will lie in the fiscal security of knowing that the enterprise has taken adequate steps to avoid liability. So we need either an implicit or an explicit form of safe harbor that encourages people to adopt the standards we develop. So what should our standard setting system look like? We have a good example in the NIST framework, a kind of collaborative bottom-up approach that collects best practices and advocates for them as the best standard available. If we follow these precepts, if we focus on standard setting rather than rulemaking and guidelines rather than mandates, we'll go a long way towards advancing cybersecurity and ameliorating the failures in the marketplace. I should caution that no solution we can devise will be perfect. This is truly an insoluble problem that cannot be eliminated altogether. But there are, in fact, better or worse answers, and I commend the subcommittee for its attention to the problem, and I look forward to answering your questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Rosen.